bridges. Comes Eleanor. <laughs> hey guys, Dusty Baker, Crossovers Bison. Welcome back to the channel. Got a little special treat for the Dunbar herd right here. Gonna come check on all the new little baby red dogs and see how they're doing. So let's uh, pull through the pasture and give them their new special treat. Nice with this contraption. Morning, everybody. All right, well, everybody seems to be doing good. Everybody's out here behaving themselves and red dogs are nursing on mamas and everything like that. Everything seems to be good. Peaches is hanging out. Peaches is always hanging out with me because she's the first usually to get cubes, but we're not doing cubes today. We are doing a mineral block um, today. So I'm gonna sneak around here, unload this mineral block out of the truck and uh, have it out here for them. And uh, the good thing about these mineral tubs, and I typically use these during the winter is what I do, but um, because of the dry conditions that we're still going through, even though we've had a little bit of rain, um, it's already changing colors again. We had that dark grass, that good green color, and uh, it lasted for about three weeks and the, the heat is back and the sun is just blasting down and there's just, it's already gone. So didn't last long, but um, uh, so we're trying to give them a little bit of supplements here and there and change it up from cubes. Uh, it, it adds up after a while and the cubes, you can go through cubes pretty quick if you're feeding them, you know, every other day or every three days or so, you're giving them 50 pounds of cubes. So it adds up and uh, we want to make sure these mamas are healthy. We're having to get put out hay and uh, Kevin has been putting out hay for the big herd here for uh, Dunbar and them. Uh, but you want these mamas, they're still producing milk and still have to nurse these uh, red dogs right here. So uh, that's what's uh, been going on here. And um, I got to pull a tire off the uh, green feeder and get it out of here because uh, this guy right here um, probably destroyed the tire. But um, other than that, these mamas have to keep uh, producing milk. So we, we like to supplement them with some cubes uh, like you guys see us do all the time or we can give them these mineral blocks like I normally would do in the winter time, but now this is what we're gonna do. Uh, those tubs last a lot longer and um, they don't eat it all at once. And so they can come and get it whenever they want and uh, get hay whenever they want, so.
well it didn't take them long to oh look at there a little sparky right there that's eleanor's baby <laughs> little heifer there's a may baby right there but look at all the little munchkins they look good and they uh they still are looking fleshy they've got good hide uh, even dealing with the conditions we have to do the best we can uh, to take care of these guys. They got the new tub and uh, it'll take them uh, a month or so. We'll kind of gauge it and see how long it takes them to go through this tub. There's a little bit of molasses in it. You've seen me put these out before. If you have, you can go back and watch some of my winter videos of putting this out. But there's a molasses star in the middle of it and then the minerals on the outside of it. And these are 20% protein tubs. It's uh, always fun to come out here and see these red dogs. I'm still not used to it seeing the red um, in September approaching October these guys uh, a lot of people ask how long does it take to lose the red color uh, of these uh, red dogs and um, I, I say anywhere from like two to three months they really start to lose them as you can see some of these guys are already the ones that were born in May right there are are completely lost all their red hair have got that dark brown uh, almost black color on some of them they look good and they look healthy and so does the mamas and so does the red dogs. So we just keep on doing what we're doing and uh, look at this little guy right here. <laughs> Eleanor's baby just cracks me up. Still can't believe Eleanor had a, had a baby. Then she has a heifer out of all that. So it's a cute little baby, but they're all good. So So like I said, what we'll do is when we work these guys, we will uh, have to be very careful because of the red dogs. What we'll do is we'll we'll separate the older ones uh, from the, the five younger uh, red dogs. She's just like her mom. Curious. What are you doing, little britches? Maybe call you Nora. Hmm. All right. It's all right. Yeah, I think uh, Eleanor's little calf's doing great. She's just like her. I kind of like the name Nora. Kind of like that. Eleanor, Nora. I think it fits her. I had some people mention that name in some of my comments and so i kind of like that name we may stick with nora but also guys speaking of some good things we are about to do a launch on some new shirts and new hats as you can tell got a new shirt right here so uh guys stay tuned for that um, we will be rocking some of this stuff out we'll let you know when everything is hitting our online website stay tuned for that i'll keep you updated and posted uh, and you can check out our website at crosstimbersbison.com. I will have more jerky in stock as soon as I can get it too. Also, guys, I'm going to go meet Cole and we are going to the Ponderosa. We've got some work to do over there. And so um, because it's exciting, when we get this new fence built, we'll be halfway through the property of building fence. We still got a lot more uh, work to do as far as Project 189, but we'll do another pasture release um whenever we get um this part of the fence done got about a thousand feet of fence which is not a whole lot and once we get that done we'll be able to rotate the big joe herd over and then let the yearlings out into a new pasture release we'll be moving both herds and doing two different pasture switches and rotations so it's just exciting more and more getting closer to where we are as far as project 189 and uh getting all the fence work done for the big joe herd some of these guys will go over to uh, the Big Joe herd. Now, we don't know what we're going to do with them and who we're going to put with who, but uh, some of these animals over here, just because we have more room at the Ponderosa, will go over eventually. So that is something that we'll keep you updated with. We're not sure we're going to do that. Probably this fall when we do our working and handling of these animals here, we will load some up and take them to the Ponderosa. 
obviously not the little bitty guys probably yet we've got some thinking to do just because it can be very uh, unsafe with these guys and there's a chance of getting them hurt because they're so young these older ones right here that were born in may don't typically have to worry about them so they'll be need to be weaned off of mama like i said earlier it's that time of year so they're all doing good over here and i uh, thank kevin for helping me take care of the dunbar herd i need to give him a shout out on here uh for putting out hay and just keeping an eye on them and just uh living the dream out here all right this is where it all started for me so uh all right cole and i are going to go to the ponderosa and we'll see you guys over there All right, guys, we are out here at the Ponderosa. This is pasture three. Here's one of the ponds back here. This pond is basically, I've got two ponds that have water left in it. And this is one out of the six ponds on this property, six or seven ponds on this property. And uh, this is the one that is, that is hosting the most water. And so this is where uh, Big Joe and them are at. So we're in, like I said, we're in pasture three. What we're gonna do is uh, I'm going to, uh, I say we're, got my helper here with me not much help but um i brought another tub over here since i had one in the back of truck i'm gonna go ahead and give one to big joe and them now they've got a bigger pasture and they have a lot more grass on this uh piece here um now there's a lot of weeds and stuff in this pasture uh three and four so the yearlings are right here in pasture two one thing about this place is maybe someday in the future we'll burn it and whatnot uh, after we have more fence built and we're able to move the bison to the back and um, which we're slowly working on that but uh, this place needs some love and uh, we need to it, it'll be cleaned up eventually in the future but there is a lot of grass here but they love the short stuff um, they don't like it when it's super tall and there's a lot of native in here you can't see this piece specifically with a lot of native because of the uh, the broom weed and the ragweed that's out here uh, but there is some native grass here in this uh, 40 acres of pasture three and four uh, that will eventually cross divide at some point. So they do have access to the pond, and um, this was in better. This one is in better shape than most of them. So I'm gonna put out a, a tub real quick uh, for them, give them a little treat, a little surprise when they get back. This is an area they like to hang out at here under these uh, big shade trees and whatnot. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and give them one and uh they'll be happy when they get back oh yeah the old star that stuff right there is sticky, especially the sun's been on it. I'm not gonna touch it. Maya, you wanna touch it? Get you a lick? Nope, okay. Cole and I are gonna go start taking some of this fence out and get it ready for a new fence so we can just move the bison again. So um, we're gonna go do that. There we go. That cedar burns hot. All right, now that started, we'll keep an eye on it while we roll up this 
old fence so we can get started on the new one. So what we're doing is these uh, clips right here, easiest and fastest way to tear a fence down is we just come through here and bolt cut these clips off. This one's only five wires, four wires, I guess. Should be a bottom one. I guess so. you just pull them back a little bit. The fence will fall off of here. That's it. <clears throat> the hard part about rolling that, this barbed wire up is these stays which we've talked about before you know how our feeling on these stays so we're just going to cut it in smaller sections so we can handle it a little bit easier instead of doing 50 yards 40 yards of, of barbed wire trying to roll it up with these in it it's very hard to do so we're just going to cut it in every about 20 or 30 feet and make it shorter sections so easier to handle and roll up we don't have a lot of barbed wire to tear down today because of bulldozer when Bryce was here cleaning the dam up, he pushed a little bit of this for me. These stays weren't here, all this barbed wire would fall down on it together. There it goes. Cedar growing in your fence line because nobody took care of the fence line. And this thing's to go on the pile. So in my last video, we talked about over here, there's a fence that runs uh, north and south. All the wooded area is my neighbor's and uh, it's just straight woods, but his fence and where the new marker is, because it was surveyed is about five feet. So we're gonna lose about four or five feet because of the new survey. But because of that, the good thing is, is because the, the fence not in the best shape, we just get to start where the new marker is and build the new fence from there. So, because we have a new fence running north and south between me and my neighbor, there will actually be two fences. One crappy one, sorry I didn't mean to say it like that, and one new one. And then also, this is a cross fence. So we don't have to go um, up as high, and we don't have to do six strands of barbed wire, which costs more because it's, this is not an exterior fence. So, um, this will be about a thousand feet of a cross fence so we can do our standard six foot t post and only five wires like we do on all of our cross fences and it'll be brand new so um it'll be nice to have a new exterior fence and a new cross fence and hopefully we don't have any issues and things like that so we do have some woody plants obviously that like to come up in their fence rows and that's because of the birds mostly the birds will come over here um, after eating seeds berries and whatnot they get on the fence line and they poop and the seeds fall within the fence line where there's not a lot of traffic not a lot of grazing and so that's where all the woody plants come from is mostly mostly from birds pooping on your fence line so thank you birds i think that one is dead Mmm, cedar. Strong. That's all that was left. Smoldering away for the rest of the day. Yeah, two-man job wrapping barbed wire is a lot faster. A little bit faster than a one-man. Well, all this barbed wire going everywhere it helps. It's just like a dad gum puzzle piece. But... 
stuff going everywhere. She want Maya. Whipped. I know what Maya wants. Want to stick? Want to stick? Want to stick? Huh? <laughs> Okay. All day. That's only like, what, 40, 50 yards? <laughs> we got three big rolls. We'll come back by and pick them up later. <sighs> Making progress. This is the best way to do it. It's the cleanest way to do it, is get the bar wire rolled up. It's easy to recycle. So um, I don't like pushing at all. I did have some push because it was just a mess. Found it. And that is the downfall of bulldozing an old fence line before you clean up the bar wire better when you just rip it right off the fence so much easier pick and choose your battles or which way you want to do it this is the cleanest way is going down the fence line and taking it out so it's all in line for you for a half day of work to rip all this back out after the dozer pushed however many acres this is back here that's still ended up saving time in the long run it does it does this is a lot cleaner way and easy easier way and fence will be ready to be built watch out Maya I can get this going Paul, if you wanna all right well while Dusty is finishing wrapping up that last spool we just cut off we are going to go over here and finish snipping off all these ties so we can finish this last little 40 yard stretch and get this new fence going Probably not the most entertaining thing to watch, but hey, this is not the most fun thing to do on a ranch either, but it needs to be done. And I'm trying to get a feel for what it's like on a ranch and if you're thinking about buying your own ranch and getting started that needs some work. You got a lot of this to look forward to. Unless you buy it already done. Or unless you gotta find a money tree on your property and you just pay everybody to do everything for you. But the sweat's good for you. I don't know about the back aches, but <laughs> plus it like puts nice little rips and kinks in your jeans and your clothes. I think people out west coast pay good money for that kind of fashion. <laughs> <laughs> we then come out here with us a week. Exactly. Be fun. Maybe not for them. <laughs> for us it would be it might be a little bit more fun to watch. Watching newbies like me struggle. Whew. Well, there's half of it. I know, like Dusty said, it doesn't look like much, but it's about 200 yards fence right there. Condensed down to one little measly looking pile. But it's a clean looking pile. Last one. Whew. All right, now Cole and I, we just finished ripping out the last stretch of barbed wire that we're doing on the entire first half of our land of Project 189. So basically we've torn out the last part until the second half starts, which there'll be plenty more of that later on. So what I'm going back and doing is I've got the spray rig with me. I'll go ahead and I'm gonna spray this fence line. It's just got some eraser in it and we're just doing it down the line. I, I'm not spraying my fields or anything, but I'm just going down the fence line, spraying some of that stuff, give it time to die, because we're gonna come back through and we're gonna build some new fence on this stretch here. So in the meantime, while we got a couple weeks and the sun is strong, we're gonna go ahead and kill some of that grass in between there and some of those woody plants, and it'll make it easier in the future, and maybe we can come back and brush hog it and 
all that stuff will be dead and so when you build your new fence it's already you don't have to spray it again until later on in the future so that's what we're going to do is we're going to go through here and spray this fence line and get it ready to go need a brush on you know what hey guys thank you for watching our channel thank you for watching us today we appreciate you guys following us along cole and i getting after on the fence then we got the dunbar herd taken care of and we got the big joe herd taken care of giving them uh just a mineral tub and a lick whatever you want to call it basically um and just give them some of that extra protein uh because the drought is back in full force again it's very hot and dry here no rain of course which is nothing new here in southern oklahoma i also want to thank cole for all of his help today he is uh he is getting after it and learning a just as much as I am, it is nice to have Cole around and just a, another hand. And typically, it's just me out here. I, I do appreciate Cole, and I want to thank him for his help uh, just doing all the work on Project 189. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget, uh, I'll keep you updated with our uh, product drop on our new hats and uh, new shirts coming at you. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you soon.